Someone Better by I underslash am underslash Ellie on AO3. Episode 25, Chapter 19, The Way Life Works. Hisashi was in the ICU, a thick bandage wrapped around his head and several lines of IV sticking out of his arms, a tube for oxygen in his nose. The IVs, the nurse had said, was to prevent any possible infection and to help with the pain should he wake up which he hadn't. There was also a drip to keep him hydrated. The bandages, they said, were for his ears. The loud shriek he heard, the loud shriek that had woken him, had been from his Sashi. When they unlocked the doors, a guard watching the cameras over the hallways had alerted security. His Sashi wasn't supposed to use a squirk at that volume without headphones. He'd severely injured both eardrums, large tears in each. They were planning on doing a surgery, taking tissue from a different part of Hisashi's body and using it as a graft to seal and heal the tears. According to the nurse, his ears were simply too damaged and he was too exhausted to be healed with a quirk. Not even Recovery Girl, someone famous in the medical field, could have conveniently healed him without hurting him further at that point. They wouldn't know the extent of the damage to his hearing until he woke up. But the nurses told him, rather morsely, that Asashi wasn't leaving without permanent damage. All Shota had gotten was a little cut on his neck. His boyfriend could lose his ability to hear. Shota felt ill. But he would live. Hisashi, at least, they were sure, would live. Should his ears not be raved by infection? He had no fever. His vitals were steady. He was fine. Blaring his injuries, Hisashi would be fine. He might have had tubes in his ears for a while. He might have to have hearing aids. He might have to file for temporary disability like Shota had so he could learn how to do everything differently. But he was going to live. I should have walked out of the hospital room and headed towards the PICU. He was reminded of the scene in the movie Mulan that Hisigu liked. The scene where Sean had tied the heavy weights to Ayo's arms that kept dragging him down when he tried to climb up the posts. Shota had a goal, one goal in mind, as he walked towards the PICU. But the heavy weights of his own guilt and fear and dread kept dragging him down back. He still had the knee brace on, more comfortable now because it wasn't depressed by pants or slacks. And he was grateful for it because it was one more suppressed pain he didn't have to deal with. Namori wasn't allowed to go with him into Izuku's room. Shota wasn't allowed in Izuku's room without a proper mask and sterilized hands. When Shota stepped in, hands clenched into fists and hearts thrumming heavily in his chest, he almost expected, almost hoped, that Izuku would jump out and say, Ha! Ah, you fell for it. I got you, Anki Show." None of these things happened. Izuku looked so small, sitting in that hospital bed, swaddled in blankets, and with so many needles and tubes and machines helping him breathe and heal and live surrounding him. IVs, auction takes, a catalyzer, and a machine reading his pulse, and a machine reading his pressure, and so much beeping, and he looked so small. He was dressed in a hospital gown. But Shota thought he could see a slight incident where the thick bandages were wrapped around the middle in a tube running out through, attached to a large bag of yellowish gray substance. Shota absolutely kept his eyes away from it. Shota grabbed a chair, taking it next to the boy beside, being careful of all the machines and stands, and grabs the child's hand. His hand was clammy and cold and dry, but his forehead was flushed red and feverish and dotted with sweat. A few strands of hair were sticking to his skin. It was clear his sleep wasn't pleasant in the least, and it made something in Shota's chest burn. Shota winced before taking off his headphones and sunglasses, because if Isuku woke up now, however doubtful that might be, he didn't want this child to be confused. The peeping was very loud, pushing through, pushing through, pushing through. 
Hello, Cabbage, Shota said, because he wasn't sure what else to say. Should he fill the silence with talking? Should he sit there and silent? Izuku couldn't hear him, but he might sense him on some unconscious level. And what if he was scared? What if he was panicked? Said I'd come back. I said I would, and now I'm here. All right? He swallowed, and it felt like something thick and solid was sliding down his throat, and that had settled to the very pit of his stomach. Your uncle Sashi's here, too. He's just preoccupied at the moment. But he's hanging on, too. Okay. We're all okay. And you're gonna be all right soon, too. Just... He was a mess. What was he even saying? Just hurry up and get better and wake up for us, okay? That's all you have to do, Cabbage. Just get better. And wake up for us, okay? That's all you have to do, Cabbage. Just get better. You're not going to be at the... at the apartment for a couple days. So you don't have chores. And we don't want you dyeing your hair pink like your Uncle Sashi. So that's where your chores, okay? Can't have you going into the rebellious phase early. That's your choice, all right? Get better for us. And, um, it's all going to be okay. He felt like curling up inside a ball because it wasn't fun. Oh, and, uh, the door to the room opened. Then, and Shoda quickly placed the child's hand back on the hospital bed, turning to look at the frantic nurse. Isashi Yamada is awake, she said. He, she winced, hands reaching for her knees. He's unresponsive, and he keeps saying your name, so we need you to see him immediately. Shota stood up quickly, abandoning his headphones and clown glasses where they laid, rushing back to the ICU. Hisashi was still in bed, trying to sit up while a doctor tried to hold him down. Tearing and pushing at the doctor's arms and groaning in pain every once in a while. Sashi, Shota said, rushing forward, but the man keep pushing at the doctor, seemingly unable to notice anything else. Shota wasn't sure how to get his attention. He grabbed the side of the man's face, trying to guide him towards his gaze. They were panicked tears in the man's eyes, bloodshot and dazed, and Shota had the sudden urge to hug him and not let go. Hisashi had always cried easily when he was panicked or emotional. It's okay, he said, and he tried to make the way he said the words clear and noticeable, just in case he couldn't hear him. You're all right. We're at the hospital. It's all okay. Sh show He stuttered, and his face went white, tears falling from his green eyes. Show, show, I, I can't. I know, Shota said, drawing his attention back from the panic state. It's, it's because of the bandages. The lie felt like it had been ripped from his throat. It's okay, Sashi, you're safe, okay? It's okay. Hisashi nodded, leaning against his hands heavily, eyes drooping slightly. There was a nurse, a syringe sticking out the IV line. Just get some rest, Hisashi. It would be better once you wake up, okay? Love you, Hisashi murmured, and Shota felt like he might scream. I love you too. Now go to sleep, please. Please go to sleep. Please go to sleep. I'll cry too if you don't go to sleep, please. Hisashi's eyes closed, and Shota helped him relax back against the hospital bed. His eyes were stinging slightly, burning and wet. He turned to the nurse. What did you give him? Shoda asked numbly, her voice feeling thick and awkward. A mild sedative to calm him down. I guess he was tired, the nurse said, stepping aside and throwing the syringe into the waste bucket. Shoda was tired too. He couldn't hear me, Shoda said, leaning back into a chair. His hands were still too numb to feel, and he fidgeted with his fingers and rolling his wrists. 
That was to be expected with the bandages and the damage to his eardrums. The nurse said calmly, Can... Can he hear at all? We won't really know unless he had the surgery and is completely healed. The nurse said, regretfully, and that could take a while considering his strength right now and the panic state he was in when he woke up. There's no telling until he's all set up and we run some hearing. Shadow remembered primary school, where they would force him into a chair and make him put headphones over his ears, only to assault them with the shivering, repeating beats. It was partially unpleasant. But the chances are, the nurse said, he isn't completely deaf. Just don't... Don't be surprised if he's a little hard of hearing from now on, okay? This kind of drama to your ears doesn't leave you unscattered. Showed and nodded, and the nurse left the room, closing the door immediately behind her. In Nebula walked in a moment later. Hey, show, she said, sitting down on the other side of the bed. There was still the hair in Isashi's face. Having fallen into it, having fallen into it white, he had struggled against the doctor, should have pressed it out of his eyes. His glasses were gone, should have wondered where they'd gone. Had he destroyed them on the mission? He'd need a new prescription. You all right, Sho? Namori asked, sounding a bit worried, like he'd shut down again, like he had the night before, covered in blood and grime and bandages on the floor of a hospital waiting room. I don't want to talk, Joda said. Please. Okay, Namori said. Okay, that's fine. Okay. They sat in silence. Joda had been in thought a lot in his 20, no, 21 years of living. He had learned a lot too, but nothing stuck more than one particular lesson. Life always came back to hurt you when you least expected it. As always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.